I'm actually going to record this because there was three people asking in the morning class. So as soon as you guys are ready to stop, look and listen, we'll start. Okay. This, these two sections are kind of the foundation of proof. And this chapter really, in the long run, becomes a lot about proof. Even though this week we're going to have a quiz on Thursday covering through tomorrow's material or through Wednesday's material. After that, we're going to focus on proof. And the foundation of proof starts with going back to looking at combinations of sides and angles and seeing if with a given combination, you can make more than one triangle. Okay? So, in other words, in, in this situation, the reason I have FFS there is I'm giving you three sides. And I'm saying with those three sides, can you make anything other than one unique triangle? So when I walked around the room, it looked like you guys all figured out this has to be unique. Just by doing a simple triangle construction. And the picture of that is any one of these two. So it, you can have the triangle resting on its longest side, its shortest side, or the middle side. The picture should look like one of those three. But if I rotate them around, and I might have to flip them back and forth, but eventually they're all the same size. So if you can get triangles where they're not all the same, shape and size, then we would say it's not unique. So, do you get that? Okay. So, if you have a situation that's new, like this situation, then this combination of parts leads into what we call our congruent theorem. Okay, we're going to talk about this in a minute. Can I still go there? before we go on any further is that your book asks the question about congruent shortcuts, okay? And what that means is when you have two triangles, for example, um, you know, if I just had this triangle and the same, you know, two triangles that are congruent, this was triangle ABC, and this was triangle DEF, and I told you that this angle is equal to this angle. I mean, you know it is because you just saw the component, but if, if it were a textbook, they would give you something like this, and they might say this is equal to that, this is equal to this, and this is equal to this. So there's six different congruent things here. There's the three angles. Angle A is congruent to angle B. Angle B is congruent to angle E. And angle C is congruent to angle F. And it's also true that AB is congruent to DE. E. And AC is congruent to D. F and CC is congruent to EF. Okay, so all of this is true as long as somebody tells you that triangle ABC is congruent to triangle DEF. So in other words, if this is true, then all six things here have to be true. That's a lot of stuff, though, and we don't really want to do all that stuff when we make proofs. So you guys got to listen to this because it, it becomes confusing if you miss the basics. So put your compasses down now. Down. Let go of it, right? Okay. So instead of having to do this every time to decide if a triangle is congruent, figure out if all six things are congruent, 
Section 4.4 and Section 4.5 is trying to show you that you can come up with certain combinations of three things if those triangles are congruent. And the, any, and the way you decide that is if you have a combination of three things, like the three sides in one triangle being congruent to three sides in another triangle, like this situation, if that creates a unique situation, then this is going to become a theorem, which I'll explain a little bit more how that's a theorem in a minute. But we're looking to make less work for ourselves in comparing the six things. So you have six different combinations of three things, and all of the ones that are unique become theorems. You get that? You want to keep going? Okay, so for the second one, it should have also turned out to be unique. Your triangle should have looked, you know, like this if you rested it on the longest side. Uh, if you rested it on DF, it would look like the one on the left. And if you rested it on DD, it would look like the one on the right. Anybody see anything different? One of those two? So we say that's unique. Okay, and then the third one, you should have come up with two triangles. Anybody get two triangles like that? Okay. So if you did it, you probably got the yellow one. Is that true? Right? So the reason it's, it's a harder to get both, but A and B is six. And so the compass kind of shows here how this can work. So if you just put in angle D, and then you put, this was the length PE, you put it right here, then you take your compass, and you take the length EF, which is what I have here, and I put my compass here, when I swing it, it hits in two different places. And so that creates the yellow triangle at this point up here. So right at this point right here, it creates that purple triangle. It was the most solar up, most to the middle or to the left. So because this is not a unique situation, those three things in combination in that specific order, when you have two sides and an angle that's not between the two sides, you can make more than one triangle. So this becomes something that's not unique. So this is not going to be a congruent shortcut. The original question at the top of your page is, are these congruent shortcuts? And it, we would say it's not a congruent shortcut because we followed the direction and we got two triangles that were not congruent. It's not a congruent shortcut. Okay, so going on to the other side, would you guys get um, steak? What did you get for number four? Unique or not unique? What is unique? Right? And it looks kind of like that? Like that? Like that? So you have one of, whoops, sorry. Thought I had it up here. There. So that's unique. And then five should be not unique because it just says the angles have to be the same. So here's a triangle, a small triangle and a big triangle. They all have, they both have the same angles. Triangles are not congruent because they're different sizes. Here's another one, right? So just because you have an equilateral triangle doesn't mean you have congruent equilateral triangles. And then the last one says. If you have to construct a triangle with the two given angles and a side that's not between them, uh, would you have a unique triangle? And my question is, why did I, why did I ask you that way if you had to construct a triangle? Maybe you can answer that. Think about why I asked you that. Looking at the other five problems, what do you know, Sage? Um, we are not. 
let's try it. So if I had to use M and T, why is that challenging? There is something challenging about that. Because you don't have the length Because you have the length AT, right? So, but you know what? There is still enough information. So if that's my AT, what he's saying is I don't know how, I don't have angle A, and I don't, well, I have angle T, but I don't have angle A. So I could take angle T, which I'm just going to trace. Here, let me do it with the highlighter. Probably going to trace. So if I put angle A in here, or angle T in place, nobody, anybody have an idea of how I, and this is A, I have to get angle A or angle M is what he's saying. Can't I do that? I mean, I don't know where to put angle M, in other words, but. What do I need? I need angle A. Yeah. I guess you could add uh, angle T and M. That's right. You could do it. You could put T and M together. You could copy them, and then that, and then draw in a line here, and then this other angle right here would be A. Do you guys see that? Because the three angles of the triangle add up to what? 180. So this is angle A. And so I could do this with a compass, but it, would, it certainly would take a lot longer with a compass. Um, and then I should end up with angle M. Okay? So my, my triangle, if I, if I just extend it line, this right here, if I trace this right here, it should be angle M. I pull it out, you can get a great picture of it. That's pretty close though, doesn't it? So do I meet the requirement? Why did I ask the question that way? Like, is this the same as any of the other? Is this unique? Is there any way I could piece that together differently? So I can't change AT, that piece. And I can't change T, and I can't change A. What is this one like? When I found angle A, what did I really just do? I have this angle here, okay, and I have this angle here, and I have the side in between. What is that like? It's two worksheets. Which one is that like? That's two angles. Which one is it like, Evelyn? So, looking at your choices, you have five things to choose from. Number six is it most like number one, number two, number three, number four, number five. Because I took my information, I took angle M and T, and I made angle A. Okay? Number one has no angles, though. Then I used angle A to make this triangle. Even what's it like? Or what? We're given two angles and we're supposed to have a segment. We're supposed to have a segment. Up here, we were given two angles and this segment that was between the two angles right here. Okay? And that became a unique situation. Down here, we were given two angles, but we, we found the third angle. So now we have two angles, A and T, and the segment between them. So for this angle, angle side situation, if you have two angles in a triangle, you always know that they're. So this situation, from this situation, no matter what, 
you can always get this situation. Side angle side. I mean, angle side angle. So if this one was unique, this one has to be unique. Because anytime you know the value of two angles in a triangle, you also know the third shape. Yeah, because it's the order of the angles. On number two, you have only one angle. So it doesn't relate. Because with one angle, there's lots of possibilities for the other two angles. And on number three, you only have one angle. But the difference between two and three is a better, like a more interesting question. So to answer your question, the reason this doesn't relate to these two is because these don't have two angles. The reason that these two are different is the order of where that angle is. When the angle is put between the sides, only one triangle is formed. When the angle is not put between the sides, you can make more than one triangle. Okay? Okay, so what are the four unique situations? Which ones are unique? Why are they? Put both away. Okay, hold the back up. What are the four unique situations? Max, what's one of them? Well, side, side, side. Okay, uh, Claire, what's another one? Which is what? So side angle side. Avery, what's another one? Angle side angle. Angle side angle. And then Amy, what's the last one? Angle angle side. Okay. So these have long paragraphs to go with them. But you just need to know how to understand what the long paragraph means. So let's look at this here. For example, side, side, side means if you have in a picture like this picture here, three sides in one triangle congruent to three sides in a second triangle. So one triangle is the one on top, triangle number one right here. And in a book problem, a lot of times you're not going to mark this you know, side. They're going to give you a picture that looks like this. This might be your first triangle, and this is your second triangle. But if a triangle is attached to another triangle in a picture, you would assume from the picture that, that they share a common side. So this is a picture of what side, side, side looks like. So the words mean if three sides in one of the triangles, so like the top triangle, are congruent to three sides in the second triangle, the bottom triangle, then you can determine that the triangles are congruent by this theorem side, side, side. So you don't need all six things. You only need three things. Remember in the beginning, we, I, I had a list of six things that, this case here, you don't need all six things to determine triangles that congruent. You need combinations of three things, but you need the right combination. Okay. I need you guys to try a couple examples because I'm not sure that you know oh, this. Okay, look at the book pictures here. You guys see these? This is on page 224. They start out really easy, but uh, the easy ones are important. So here's the directions. Decide whether the triangles are congruent. So and name the congruent shortcut. So that would be side, 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 angle, side, angle, side, angle, or angle, angle, side. Okay? Um, if triangles cannot show, be shown to be congruent as labeled, you just write cannot be determined. So look up here. And the first one's really easy. In combination, you have three sides and the angle between the two sides of the first triangle congruent to because one's 18, one's 22, and the angle's 65 congruent to two sides and the angle between the two sides. Okay, so we would conclude that L 
capital L and capital I are equal, so they should be in the same relative position. Position is important. And I'd say the triangles are congruent. And Josh, why would I say the triangles are congruent? Evelyn, what do you think? Do you agree with her? Yeah, what's the because, um, air is two sides, uh, Which one of the four? She said it. She's not here. I just want to see if you agree. What'd you say, Jossie? Is it side angle side? It is. Okay, so because of side angle side. But when I look at this one, I only have two things. So what do you think, Carson? Is there anything I can draw from the picture? Yeah, if I separated them out, what would be true? What would be in both? What part belongs to both? No, not on this one. On this one. What's in both? Right, and so when you have a shared part, you're going to assume equal. Okay? So, Dylan, what is the reason? Are those two triangles? Yeah, what's the reason those two triangles are congruent? So, it's side, side, side. Okay, so look at a different situation here. If we go a little bit farther, and now you have to put the order in. Is there anything here that you guys see that would not be a congruence? relationship. Because the directions here say, if possible, main triangle congruent to the given triangle and state the congruence conjecture. If you cannot show any triangle to be congruent from the information given, right cannot be determined. Give me an example of a cannot be determined one that you might see. You see that part? Dylan? What do you guys think? Who's saying what? Why? You have the shared sides. So you have two, you have one of the combinations, right? So that one will work. Why is that? They do have a shared side, right? But what's different is the shared side in the blue triangle is between the angles, right? The shared side in the green triangle is not between the angles. So you don't have the same relative position. You don't, all you can say is this cannot be determined right now. That's all you're going to answer. Okay, that's not the only one on that page, but that's, that's how you answer the question. Okay? Did I give you enough to start with? Okay.